What is going on guys? Today I have another review and it is about a classic paintball mask that got a facelift. The all new JT Proflex. Alright, so this Proflex isn't really exactly new, but it is improved. They have made some changes to make this Proflex even better than previous iterations. Now, it looks the same as all other GI Proflexes as far as design of the mask. Yes, it has the same kind of skirt style and everything as GI Proflexes, as well as the logo of the GI Proflexes. These just happen to be the Boston Black Widows. Now these were a limited release. I believe there are only 750 ever made. So what did the new Proflexes come with? Does it come with any sort of special case or anything? Did anything change? It still comes with the classic Proflex cardboard box, right? So you see a lot of companies releasing their masks with kind of like mask cases now. These still come in a cardboard box, but that's okay because I think that they're still playing into the old school vibe where people like to still put their Proflexes on display. This is a pretty nice display box because you can still see the Proflex through the cardboard box, which, you know, as a collector, I appreciate that they're sticking with the same style box. So this one came with a new style red thermal lens that a lot of people had heartburn over because it wasn't as dark red as people wanted it to be and blah, blah, blah. But honestly, it can't, you, it can't be too dark. If it's too dark, you can't, you can't see things, right? So you have to be able to see things when you're playing. So they're not gonna make a super dark red lens. They're gonna make one that's a little bit less dark. Now this one is a lot darker than the lava lens. The lava lens is a lot more opaque. You can see through it a lot easier. This one, not so much. So they made it, I think, as close to red as possible with it still being a usable lens. Now, it came with the regular style mask bag. It's just a black bag to keep your mask safe that I never use, honestly. And it came with the largest barrel sock I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't know why they made a barrel sock this big. It is absolutely gigantic. And I think when it comes to barrel socks, I, I don't want one this, this big because size isn't always better when it comes to barrel socks so don't don't make them too big i mean unless like you're rocking like an apex barrel tip like you're never going to use this thing ever now this is just it, it's just a monstrosity of a barrel sock it is huge um but you know what it looks pretty cool i just think it would have been cooler if it was a normal size barrel sock and not one that is freaking gigantic but for 160 bucks plus shipping, you got this super sick Black Widow mask. You got the new lens that they said was super limited, but then they're actually gonna make it more of them. And you've got this gigantic barrel sock and you got this here bag. But I will say that I really like the changes they made from the older style GI Pro Flexes to these ones here. One of the biggest things you'll notice that is different is the chin strap. No longer are you gonna have the classic snap style chin strap that is, I mean, everything that we're used to, right? Just snaps in, snaps out. I mean, it does the job, right? Now you're going to have the new style that everyone is going to magnetic chin strap. Now I will say the magnetic chin strap does make it easier to snap on and off your chin strap. The way I personally wear my chin strap though is it's a little loose so I can slip it on and off my face really, really easily and I don't have to worry about snapping your chin strap. However, make sure you wear a chin strap so that if you take a bad dive or something like that, it's not gonna flop off your head. With that being said, they've also added this chin padding here. It does make it a little more comfortable, but once again, you're not gonna be cinching down this chin strap so hard that it's gonna be tight against your neck. However, it does prevent kind of that rub that you'll get sometimes with the chin strap. It is a nice soft material and it is removable. So you can take this off if you like. There's just a little bit of Velcro there. 
Another thing special about this mask is the overall design. As you can tell, it has a really cool spider webs everywhere, makes it look really unique. This is a throwback to the old Boston Spider F8s that there were very few made, and now they're very expensive and very hard to get. Very few hardcore collectors actually own the old Boston F8s. Now this allows collectors to kind of own a little bit of that nostalgia in the new ProFlex, and I've got to say, the design is really, really cool. I really like the design of this mask. I also like that they brought it to the skirt, the frames, and the ears. It really ties the mask all together. Personally, I think it would have been cool if they brought the spider webs across the visor as well, but you really don't see them doing any visor designs, and they really didn't do visor designs in the past either. It was a lot of prototypes. If you, if you see anything with the designs on it, usually it's a prototype. Usually most, if not all, of their visors are a solid color, and it kind of breaks up the mask a little bit, so it looks really nice. These JT Woven straps are some of the most comfortable straps in the game. They are very well made. The designs that they come up with are really cool, especially this Black Widow strap. I think it is freaking awesome. And the silicone beading on the back is your standard three squiggly lines of silicone beading, but it does a really good job of keeping the mask on your head when you're playing paintball. Now, one of the biggest things that they touted was the softness of the rubber. That is what people want with the ProFlex, is nice, soft rubber. Some people roll up their mask, but what I could see is if you're a scenario player, and I know this doesn't appeal to a lot of people, but if you're a scenario player and you want to roll your cheek on your marker so you can look down, let's say you have a first strike marker, you can roll your cheek down and this actually flexes with you. So this is actually a great mask if you want to roll your cheek and look down a scope when you're firing first strike rounds. Um, with that being said, I personally want soft ProFlex bottoms. And not only that, but they made the ears softer as well, which I think is really awesome. It is a happy medium, I would say, between the old school flexes, which are these, right? OG, if you want to call it that, the old school flexes, and the newer GI flexes. I'd say it's somewhere in between. These are a little stiffer. They don't have as much give. And I think they do that so when you get hit in the mouth, you don't get popped in the lip. Now with these, there is a chance you could get popped in the lip if you get shot right in the face, so just be aware of that. However, that's a risk we all take when we're rocking our Pro Flexes. Another thing is I despise the GI foam. GI foam is absolutely horrible. Not only in feel, but the way that it was applied to the frames. Making it stand up super high over the frames, it did not look good, and it wasn't very soft. It didn't have that OG feel. If you feel the OG mass, man, the foam on that is amazing. It is so soft. And I will say that they have brought back that softness here in this mask. It is a lot better than the previous foam they had in the GI mask. I despise it. I have frames that honestly, I'm trying to get rid of because I, I hate the foam. I absolutely do, I do not like the foam and I, it pinches my nose. It doesn't feel great on my face at all. Um, however, with this mask, they changed it. The way that it's applied is a lot better. The way it's positioned on the mask is a lot better and the material it's made out of is a lot better. So you will be more than happy with the foam that comes with these new GI Pro Flexes. Now the lens change system and how you take it apart is exactly the same. When you're taking apart a JT Pro Flex, the first thing I do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the strap so I can unscrew the ears. There are two screws on each ear, right? So you're going to have one at the top by the temples on each side and one at the bottom of the ears on each side. Usually you can go ahead and untighten those with your fingers. That's what I usually do is I put pressure and I twist it a little bit and they come loose. And that's how I tighten it as well because I want to be able to remove them with ease. I don't want to have to use tools. Yes, this is not a toolless system if you go ahead and crank down those screws. So when you first take apart this mask, you're going to have to use a screwdriver and possibly an Allen key if it's really, really tight. So this is not a tool system if you look at it like that. But once you go ahead and remove the ears, then you can go ahead and just pop off the skirt. There's just four tabs that keep the skirt in. You're going to just rip it off really um, and it'll come right out. From there, you have the frame sitting by itself with the lens in it. I start at the top and I just rip up from the top and just keep ripping until you get to the nose and the nose is the last part that you're gonna take out. Now I'm demonstrating this on my Dynasty mask because this is not my Boston mask. 
I don't want to run the risk of messing it up in any possible way and changing it to the new lenses that it comes with because it's not my mask. I want to thank Briar for letting me go ahead and review this mask with all the new updates because I do not have one of my own because I'm not fast enough to buy them. And honestly, I thought that it wasn't gonna sell out that quick, but sure enough, it sold out pretty quick. Back to the lens change. So we took out the lens and now we're gonna go ahead and put in a smoke lens. You're gonna do the opposite of what you did before. You're gonna start at the nose, put in the two nose tabs first, then you're gonna put in the bottom tabs. And what I do is I just press my palm against it and it pushes right in. That's, why, that's how I go ahead and put in my lenses. Then you're going to make sure that the edge of the lens lines up in the little crevices on each side of the frame. From there, you're going to go ahead and bring the top of the frames over the top of the lens, line up those tabs, and then you're going to push in the outside tabs first. And then the last thing you're going to do is push in that top middle tab. A lot of people forget the top middle tab and it looks goofy when you take pictures telling everyone to check out your sick new JT ProFlex that you built with all these different parts and the top tab is sticking up. So I've seen it a bunch of times. I'm sure those of you who are flex heads have seen it a lot too. Don't forget that top tab. And from there, you just put it back together the way you took it apart, really. Once, the fr once I got the frames, I go ahead and put the ears on first. I just tighten it finger tight. I don't do anything crazy to get my ears back on as far as the screws go. Then I put on my frames before I put in the screws, obviously for the bottom part of the ears, and those just snap in real quick and easy and then I screw in the bottom part of the ears. And now once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and put back on my strap. Now these straps are butterfly style straps. There are hundreds, if not thousands of different butterfly style straps out there that you can go ahead and put on a JT Pro Flex. They are pretty easy to put back in. Once again, you shouldn't need tools, but I've seen people use butter knives and stuff like that. But honestly, I use my thumb and just put a little bit of pressure. So I put it in through the back of the ears, and then you see the butterfly tabs. Go ahead and push it through the gap on each side of the frame. Once you push it through, you should be able to reach into the inside of the mask and pull the rest of the strap through. And then you've put your JT Pro Flex back together. And then you can go ahead and snap on the visor or take it off, whatever you wanna do. I usually play without a visor, but some people, if you're rocking a Pro Flex without a visor, you're doing it wrong. So if you're a visor guy, not a visor guy, it's up to you. I'll use it when it rains, but um, that's essentially how you take apart and put together JT ProFlex and change out the lens. It's really not that bad. You can get pretty quick at it. I know some people who haven't done it do struggle, but it's really not that bad at all once you get used to changing out the lenses. Now, the thing I love about ProFlex is the most is building your own ProFlex. You can take these bottoms and put it on these frames. You could take these frames and put it on the gold bottoms. It's all sorts, it's whatever you wanna do. It's literally Legos for paintball players. So you can make whatever style mask you want. It's super, super cool, it's super fun, and you can go crazy with it. And that is my favorite thing about the JVT ProFlex, besides the overall look. I personally like the old school look of the ProFlex. I like the way you, when, it wear, when you wear it on your face, it feels absolutely great. Now let me show you what these look like on your face. And you know, I'll compare them to the old school ProFlex as well. And obviously I'm not gonna wear a mask without a headband. I just can't do it. OG ProFlex, and I know I still have the stickers and everything on it, but this is what an OG ProFlex looks like. You can kind of tell with the venting here and everything like that, as well as the old school logos that they have on them. And that's kind of how you can tell. Key looks very similar to the new style JT, but it's a little bit smaller but you can definitely tell between all the different eras, especially because Key still has these style of bottoms. Now the bottom is very flexible, right? So when I put on these, same thing. Mask feels absolutely fantastic on the face. It doesn't pinch my nose like the old GI foam does. That was like overly thick and not as soft and it was just, I was not a fan. Once again, breathability, incredible. See how I didn't even have to unsnap the chin strap, that's all you have to do. You leave it about this tight, right? And then you don't have to worry about taking it off, snapping it, snapping it back on. But it does have that magnetic chin strap to make it nice and easy, and you can go ahead and one hand it, right? You can one hand take on and off your chin strap, make it nice and easy, the way you don't have to worry about your chin strap when you go ahead and play in tournaments. 
And once again, I absolutely love the feel of this mask. You're gonna wanna high strap it or you're gonna look like a low strap and nerd, of course. So this is the ProFlex. And as you can tell, it has that old school, aggressive look that we all love and appreciate with the JT ProFlex. So overall, what do I think of the different updates that JT has applied to the ProFlex? Honestly, I really like it. The chin strap, personally, I could care less about, but it's the quality that they've added now to these Pro Flexes that I really, really appreciate. The softness of the ears, the softness of the bottoms, the foam is freaking awesome. I'm so glad that they changed the foam. That is amazing. I love the designs that they're coming out with, really. I don't like that the cash money mask came with a printed strap. They should all come with woven straps. It, it's just the way it should be. If people wanna buy printed straps on the side, that's on them, but they should all come with woven straps like this because this strap's quality is head and shoulders above those printed straps. It's the same lens changing system. They are pretty inexpensive. Now this mask, for example, was $160. However, if you want an all black ProFlex, just a blacked out one, 85 bucks. It's one of the cheapest masks on the market and it gets the job done. Yes, the lens changing system is not as fast as newer masks out there, but honestly, even in tournaments, I hardly ever change my lens. The only time I did it one time is when the sun was in my eyes really bad at a tournament in Germany and we had to change to a mirrored lens because I'm literally looking into the sun. Other than that, I change the lens pretty darn fast on this thing. I'm, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, right? So. You can go ahead and change the lens relatively quickly regardless. I love what they did. I hope they continue to improve these, these products. I think that the magnetic chin strap is just keeping up with the times. So that's why they did it. I'm a JT ProFlex fan. I love what JT is doing with this line. I absolutely love the new designs that they're coming out with. It is so cool that any field or anything, as long as they order enough ProFlexes, can create and design their own. Even if you wanted to make your own ProFlex and you were like, I have enough money to buy 750 ProFlexes. I would like to design my own. You could probably do it. That's the coolest thing is you see all these awesome designs out there. Now, from what I understand, they're gonna now make everything with the new soft rubber and the new foam. So all new masks coming out after this one are gonna be awesome. Now, thank you so much, JT, for listening to your customers as far as future JT ProFlex releases because we were looking for softer rubber, we were looking for better foam, and you delivered. So thank you, we appreciate it. I can't wait to see what comes out next. Now I fully recommend this new style of JT Pro Flex. It is so much better than the previous GI versions. If you are on the fence about buying a JT Pro Flex before, definitely get one of these newer ones. You will not be disappointed. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when I post more videos, and I'll be sure to talk to you guys soon. Peace.